America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll open up this August 5th morning commissioner's meeting. We have Casey from the auditor's office, all three commissioners, and the county attorney all present. Uh, first on our agenda, we've got uh, uh, the assessment and assumption agreement with uh, Parkview Hospital. We had a couple uh, typos um, that uh, has been caught, so we're just changing that. You guys had a chance to look that over. Holly, you reviewed that? Yes. Okay. And entertain a motion to uh, approve that uh, assignment agreement with Parkview Hospital. The update. So moved. Second. All in favor? The motion carries three. Uh, Council on Aging's report. Um, you guys reviewed that. Doug, do you have anything to add to that? Or you just a transcript report? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Situated here. Okay. Basically, this is for both first and second quarter. Okay. So. First quarter senior trips, we did 33.76. Second quarter, 36.77. Public was 32.32 and 32.98. So we had a total of 68.08 on the first quarter and 69.75 on the second quarter. Uh, county trips, 22.070 in the first quarter, 22.71 in the second. Uh, first quarter, we drove 47,658 miles. 50,890 in the second quarter. Worked 3,305.5 hours the first quarter, 3,595.8 the second. Uh, we had uh, we used 3,335 gallons of fuel the first quarter, 4,009 in the second quarter. Um, basically, we've got nine full-time drivers now and two part-time drivers. We did hire another part-time driver. And I, gave, I sent you the, the quarterly claim, right? Mm -hmm. Where you look at. There has been some minor changes, but the bottom line doesn't change. This shifted some money in different spots. So you see yourself busier than you have been in the past? Then. Yeah, I mean, we've never fully recovered from pre COVID. We were averaging 160 to 170 rides a day. Now we're about 125, you know, like good. Day we do 140, 145, but it's slowly starting to pick up. I know it, we've had some talks with Pat Brown in the health department. I don't know if they've contacted you or not. Yeah. On, on some issues, and, and that's why I was wondering what. Yeah, well, I know there was a, an instance with Pat that um, he had booked a ride, but something happened that we couldn't. To fill up, we couldn't meet that. And I mean, we have some <clears throat> pretty tight pre print schedules that are every day, okay. and uh, so it's hard, you know, if there's a driver available, we'll do it. And we have two guys that are basically dedicated out of town that's Medicaid, and then that's changing now too from Southeast Trans, and it's going to LCP, so we're trying to get set up with those guys. So, yeah, I, I know. Uh you know, Pat was looking at starting something himself. You know, yeah, I don't know if you was familiar with that. Or I was in that meeting. Was you in that meeting? Okay, okay. And, and so I don't know, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'll let you guys talk and see what you come up with, but I mean. Yeah, really, it depends on our schedule. If we have a driver available, we'll do it. You know, that's not, that's not an issue. It's just um, a lot of the, most of the Medicaid runs are already uh, on the schedule. Some or two months out, yeah. you know. And I know some even some talk was, you know, when, when somebody gets out of jail, which Travis and know what day they're getting out of jail, having, having arrangements made where, you know, you're going to pick them up and take them to 
X, Y, and Z, whether it's the you know treatment center, whether it's you know, and, we, and we do that. I don't know if Pat's familiar with that. Oh, we, okay. We utilize Transpo. If we've got indigent inmates leaving that doesn't have transportation, we utilize Transpo to, to take them wherever they need to go. Okay, so, I wouldn't know. Yeah, I wouldn't so, that. Well, I'm sure Pat's not either. So yeah, okay. yeah, okay. we don't we don't send them out walking unless unless they want to. But I mean, typically they've either got a ride or, or we, we give them a ride with Transpo. So. I'm gonna say we picked up quite a few. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's worked out great. We used to kick them out the door even in the middle of the winter. Um, and, and they came to jail with whatever clothing they had on. So, you know, a lot of times they would come in with t shirt and a pair of shorts or whatever. And, and at least before me, we would send them out in 20 degree weather, t shirt and shorts and everything else. So well, that's good to know. So you, make, you make arrangements when they come out if they got someplace. If they, if they need a ride, we'll give them a ride through Transpo. Yes. Okay. Okay. We buy um, vouchers through commissary, and, and Amber and the jail staff have those readily available if, if they need a ride. So it was a good thing, for, like in after hours, like an evening. Yeah. Lay out something so yeah. if, if we can figure something out with that i mean i know there may be a few more funds available uh whether we're looking if you're looking to hire somebody for evening work or something because i'll possible. take that one call type thing where they take a man home i don't know just yeah we, we need to look at that stuff too and we can we're waiting uh, i used to doing a traffic study for us, a transportation study for all full county yeah. so that's coming Pretty, maybe this month yet yeah, we ought to get some results back from that and see what they had to say because they contacted all the other communities <coughs> as well good i mean we've talked about trying to a fixed route to like Kiwana or akron or something you know but if, if we just haven't been able to justify it and unless the only way it would work is people that were coming into the grocery or doctor's appointments they could kind of schedule them on, on the same day <coughs> Okay, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, did you get anything on that, Casey, that Peterson? Um, okay, we have a. Uh, We have a couple laptop requests. Uh, we have one from the, the Treasurer's Department uh, looking for a laptop. You guys read that number? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll entertain a motion on that. I'll second. Okay. Well, I'll bear. Motion carries 3 0. Uh, Oops. <coughs> just one signature. And we have one from the coroner's office. Questions on that? If not, I'm entertain a motion to approve that. Make a motion to approve it. I'll second it. Favor. Motion carries three. And by the way, I talked to Josh. He says he has laptops available. He will not have to go out and spend extra money, so they are available. Good. I thought he did. Yeah. Uh, then we have a request for a cell phone for the coroner's office. Uh, so that way they don't have to use their personal phones. Take a motion to approve that. I'll entertain the motion. Second. All right, all in favor? Motion carries three note release for Nevada Mud Lake, uh, $150,000 that we loaned them, uh, getting a release to approve uh, lead them of that burden. So they've met all the requirements uh, set forth to them. Entertain a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3-0. This one needs to be notarized, Casey. Uh, yeah, I'm right, right, right. right. at the end, yes. Yeah. Oh, so she's got to watch the yeah. sign. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, we're going to department updates. 
trip. The mayor brought you in case you need to get out here. We'll get you in. Here. I was thinking about what I needed to say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you waiting for what? Um, Apache Drive's done open as of Friday. Um, been going back and forth with the NDOT Thursday and Friday um, since we don't have the signs that I would request almost a year ago to be looking at anyway. Um, looking at flashing crossing signs, push button activated crossing signs at 12th and 15th. And I'm not sure what their plan is out of, out of the patch, but we're going to have something soon. So um, the other thing, we've, uh, we're aggressively looking at options to, uh, and we've got somebody working on a grant for a facility, a new facility, possibly for an emergency shelter. I know that's been something we've been dealing with every winter for who knows how long. Um, not only are we looking at that, which I hope to have up and running by uh, winter of 25, 26, but we're gonna look at what our, our plan is for this coming winter. So we've got a group of people working pretty hard on trying to put those two things together. So that is active. Um, probably the only other thing I need to talk about is the wooded property east of the hotels. We did get all the MOUs from McDonald's and I needed a couple from the property owner. Um, and I wanted to correct the, the, the article in the Sentinel a little bit. Um, we are not spending. We are not spending taxpayer money to put a fence in. Okay. Uh, I had an agreement with this landowner that since our equipment was out there and we were going to clear the, the wooded area for the easement for the road, we would go ahead. Which is we were. Uh, Wayne and I walked it last week, and it's pretty thin inside the perimeter of that. Um, so we're going to clear the rest of that woods, prepare it for development, and in exchange for that, the property owner is going to build his own fence between that property and the hotel and then across the back. He also owns its Rochester Place Apartments that's behind the hotel and he's gonna put about, about 550 feet of fencing in exchange for us clearing this property for him while we're there. So that's that's the other thing. So we do have all the uh, MOUs on that. I meet with the engineer Monday, week from the day, and uh, kind of getting our plans together on um, having stuff prepared for the CCMG grant in January so we can have hopefully it completely, completely done by maybe as early as June next year. So it's really about all I've got right now. So. Uh, a couple things real quick. They said Steve Williams was being a crossing guard out there this morning. So I'm going to thank Travis, Stephen. That's what Travis Stephen said. Stephen took it upon himself. So I want to thank him for yeah, that was safety. Oh, uh, that is volunteer. We, Dwayne and I talked about having one at 15th we said, if we want a 15th, we want a 12th, and then do that when you want a passion. So we'd have to come up with three staff members, which is not easy to do. Right. Um, so I'm hoping, I've kind of put, I've actually pushed in that pretty hard this last week, and we're going to get some push button, like I said, these crossing signs in pretty quick. And you really can't miss them. When they're active, You, I think it's mm -hmm. going to uh, really help slow down traffic and right. draw attention to it. So Right. Um, another thing, we have not got, we have not got an interlocal agreement between the city and the county on 911 you dispatching. You never found one from before? No. Okay. Well, we need to rewrite one for the additional. Okay. So whatever okay. you guys, whenever you guys are ready to make that decision, so that, need to make that decision. Something Holly needs to be thinking about how she wants that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the amount, because we'll need to get it in our budget right away. Well, should we go ahead and set the amount? Can we go ahead and set the amount in, in a meeting and then, and then they know what to write the interlocal yes. agreement for? Yes. Okay, so Josh. Josh is, no, he's not going to be here. We were, what, $100,000 more? We're thinking right around $100,000, yes. Yeah. I, mean, I think that was a discussion we had early on. We were tossing out some numbers and kind of looking at how it was going to uh, offset some of our costs that we currently have. That would, So we felt like it was going to be kind of a wash between what we had been paying you, which I think was 50 for the nights and weekends. Um, so. I don't think that's going to be an issue, so I'll take it to the council or board of work. Well, we better vote on it then, haven't we? Put them, if that's what you guys want to do, I mean, we yeah, better make it legal that way. Is, is that includes Spillman too? The Spillman um, contract? Getting them on board with Spillman? I, I, I can just make sure that's written in there if that includes that. They were going to take care of Spillman. I think you were going to take care of Spillman when you, Trent. Now, with Spillman directly, but there's still associated costs with the county with them coming on the Spillman server, and I know that's where Josh was. I mean, I would just, my guess is that 100000 probably includes me, and I would just make sure that that. Are you in a big hurry? No. We'll, we'll see if we can get Josh over here in a little bit. See if we can't get him over here anymore. 
Okay. Before we make a decision, give okay. us a few Sounds minutes. Good. Anything else? Yeah. Good. No, we're good. Okay. Thanks, um, I literally I just got the uh, Duke Energy Banning Engineering site visit um, that we conducted uh, a couple months ago. Uh, questionnaire is back, so I've got to be filling those out. Um, we've got three sites that they want to evaluate uh, for further um, possible improvements at some point in time. Um, the Lilly Endowment money, <clears throat> we had put in um, an arts project and uh, on the uh, blight remediation side, we put in the Putts building. Um, for some reason, Stephen Ray's group failed to get the application in on time, so we're extended over to the end of September. And I have to redo it, so at this point, I'll put Putts in and then a, a couple other projects that have come in to work with us, uh, one in Fulton and one in Kiwana on top of it. Um, the housing study is continuing on. We're going to do a uh, business roundtable in a couple of weeks, um, get some businesses in, discuss what uh, types of housing problems they're having very specifically. And then uh, this is separate, by the way, from all the other developers that we've talked about over the time. Uh, this is our project and so we will be sp uh, working specifically and designing specifically to the needs of the business community the school system the hospital like that what kind of homes that they're looking for at this point um, and then the last part of it is uh, i told you that we were updating the hotel the hotel study from four years ago and the company is sending a young lady in tomorrow. I'm going to bring her around for two hours to the community, show her different sites, different locations, uh, just let her get to see what Fol uh, Rochester and Fulton County are like, and then she'll go back and do whatever it is that she does and give us some site selection. And, uh, I expect to have the study done, uh, frankly, by the middle of September, and then we'll release that too. So let's see. Sorry. Right. Good. Thank you. Bye. Josh. Yes, sir. Um, on the contract that, with the city, the MOU, uh, did that include, uh, we're talking around the $100,000 mark, correct? There at one time. Did that include the Spillman? Where were we? I, I'm not. <laughs> no, it's, it's been some time since we talked, yeah. talked about it, forgive me, Mayor. I know we kind of talked about the dispatch side of things, and then we also talked about the city police department with the interconnect with us. Um, I know that we have some hard numbers, but I don't think we truly got to a full hard number set yet. Am, am I correct on that, Mayor, or am I incorrect? I, and Brian? I think you're right. That, that we have that number in our head. That's what we're trying to. I know we put you on the spot. I apologize. No, that's okay. Um, that's okay. That maybe if you could come up with, by the our next meeting, just try to. Yeah, and, and I think we're going to probably find out more because I know Matt is in the process of getting the link finalized on his end. We've got it connected. I know he's waiting. I think there's a piece of software that you need for an ANSA over there. But um, beyond that, we'll probably have a better idea of any other needs that they may have after this week, okay. I would say. Yeah, the, the way I was thinking, the 100000 was basically just for the dispatch. I, I, I want to say that's correct. Spillman was whatever it cost back to the and whatever they want to do with Spillman. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Right. And I know that, you know, hard number wise, the city police department's using their MDTs out in the squad cars, and we have hard numbers on that because we have to provide them an absolute secure access license for each machine. But beyond that, though, I don't think we have any hard numbers as of yet. Okay. So. All right. So when do you need your budget? When does the city um, Not in a month. Okay. So we got another meeting we before we have to. Yeah, maybe even two. Okay. I mean, we got a ballpark we can work from anyway, so I would say if, if you need another month, that's fine. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Josh on that? No. Since you're here, do department head report? Beyond what I have in the email, that's about the majority of it. Most of our focus is this week we've got a couple website meetings. We may have to push the one back because Kathy's not going to be here tomorrow. 
but beyond that, um, that's pretty much what's going on, what you have in the girth of the email and the body of it. So, do you guys have any questions for me? I think so. Thanks, Josh. Okay, thank you. you're welcome. Thank you. Travis, Sheriff. I don't have a whole lot at all. Um, kind of piggybacking off of what Josh said with the spillman, we do have training scheduled this Wednesday for the city to train them up on the mobile spillman. So that's kind of why I brought that up, is I know that they're getting close. So I just wanted to make sure that that's the way you guys, you know, whatever figure you figure with spillman too, because Josh does have hard numbers with that. So um, our two K9 Tahoes were delivered Friday. So we've got those out, out on the road now. So we decommissioned one that was on the end of its life, we're just going to use it for an admin vehicle, and then uh, we kept the other one set up to use as a pool vehicle for patrol. So, um, 138 inmates this morning. 51 of those are ours. 54 are Grant County. 30 are Howard County, and we have three federal inmates. Um, Bethany Johnson, our newest hire from April, goes down August 19th for her physical assessment for the academy. Um, if she gets in, then she'll start the academy the following Monday for 16 weeks. And that's all I've got. Okay. Any questions? All right. Thank Thanks, you. Gary. I just got a few things, just updates. Um, they are starting the sidewalk over on the north part of the courthouse right now. Um, they're going to try to pour uh, about 30 fourths of it today, and then they'll finish up. They'll be done by the end of the week, though. Um, and then I talked to John about uh, the asphalt that we're going to cut into to having them come and hot patch it right up against the new curb that's going in. Okay. Um, Forte Seal just got here. That's where I just went. <coughs> Excuse me. And they're digging down now to start that sealing process on the basement link. And then if you've seen, I've got all the new lights coming. This is a slow process, but I've got them in your guys' office now. And I got a few more offices to do in here, and they've already started at the courthouse too. So, um, new lights are going in. I think they look good. I hope you guys are liking them. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to save us quite a bit of money. Um, for about every ten lights they take out, we're only putting five back in on the average right now. Uh, this room stayed about the same, but I have been able to take some lights out of the area so that we're not putting as many back in. So it is kind of saving us some money on that too. They're bright. Yeah, and these are on the low LED right now, so and I can adjust them again too. If we want it brighter. A lot of people don't. But yeah. You don't want to be brighter. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know. So um, other than that, you guys got any other questions? Oh, and the boiler. I want to bring up the boiler is down to um, them coming and firing it up and checking it here in the next month to make sure the new boiler is ready to go. It's all wired, hooked up, and ready. So do we have a price on the what the curbing is going to cost us? Uh, the, I'll, I'll extra on top of it. No, I don't. I I, I keep giving an estimate. I'm thinking around five eight thousand somewhere in there. Are you going to have that in your budget? Or yes, gonna, yes. You I are going to have that. Yeah, in I can cover. And I, I just want to bring up a lot of people have been asking me why the county's doing the city sidewalks, and um, I didn't really know how to respond to them except that we're trying to take care of a problem that needed fixed. They're not city sidewalks. They're county sidewalks. Well. I, that's, it's on county. Right? No, no, it's, blocks, it's, no, no it's actually. No. I, mean, I actually looked up the property line and it's not. It's actually city. Limestone wall inside that is a county. Mm -hmm. But it's. The city says, like, we have to take care of the sidewalks. <coughs> it's like the homeowners have to take care of the sidewalks. sidewalks the yeah. 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 That's why I always thought the sidewalks were us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I always thought the sidewalks were ours. And I, had, you know, like I said, I wasn't, you know, just people, different people, been asking, what do you, why, why are you take care of them all? Because I think that's done. how it's supposed to be. They're, 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 I don't think they're technically ours as far as the property where the boundaries are, but right. I think they're ours to maintain. So, so. but we can blame it on Amy now. Yeah. She's city. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so we actually get that. Those were really <coughs> and, and they're working on the probation too because it was actually busted in pretty bad. Actually, yeah. when you get over there and actually look at it, it was bad. So, I mean, I, I think that the the probation office will look really good now that we've got sidewalks done, <coughs> landscape done. It looks more unison to each building. So now he comes walking in. So if you have any other questions, that's all I got. <laughs> but you can wonder why we're taking care of the city sidewalk. 
I heard on the radio we had to check us to throw some money at it, so I got to talk to my street guy. And that's just like a Christmas gift to you all. We already took our Christmas trees down. <laughs> Four foot in the closet in there. I know. More I, lit it, I lit it last year. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Chad, any maintenance of the jail? Um, just the maintenance building. We are. They sent the application in for the state release and waiting to hear back from that. So okay. they still haven't given me a date on when they're going to start, but I'm going to say in the next couple months. Okay. That was who burns? Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Right, several permits for you to start with. Oil 31's been a project, and yes, it has. It looks nice, doesn't it? Looks really good. I'm it's talking where they're boring all them lines and... Oh, you're talking about RTC? Well, whoever's Morrison. doing it, yeah. 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 A lot of stuff going on down there, a lot of project. I didn't, have you seen that? I didn't realize it was going to be that in Facey. You're talking about up north. Up north yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's the Comcast one. Yeah, that's why they thought. I didn't think it. Yeah. I think they got into an RTC line the other night. But it, yeah. RTC was more on the south end. Oh, you know, yeah. okay. Why we was pavement, or not us, but then around was pavement. So. Well, it looks good. I know I've heard this a few times. Mm -hmm. South is nice. Yeah. There's still some. Oh, uh, so. Things that need to be cleared up on that road, but for the most part, it's about done. Mm -hmm. You have to do adjustment on some striping, doesn't need reflectivity, and uh, there was some signage issues, you know. Mm -hmm. so, working off the checklist on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, first permit I have for you today is permit request 2428. Uh, Pierce Services, on behalf of Frontiers, requests a permit to drop service at. 729 South, 350 West, Key One, and four under 350 West, uh, 34 feet, at a depth of 48 inches. I didn't see anything. You didn't see no problems. issues in okay. there. Okay. plans. We have permit 2428. Uh, no questions. I'm going to that. So moved. Second. All fair. The next four I have are from Mark Thompson of NIBSCO. Uh, we'll start with 2429. Uh, he's requested a permit to install a new gas line at 3189 Main Street, down by the lake. And all of these are going to be bores. So, I'll confirm that with me. Yeah. No issues with this one here where you're at? No. Okay. 2429, you're getting motion to approve. So move. Second. All in favor? Next one, 2430. Again, NIPSCO's request a permit to install a new gas line at uh, 11674 West South Park Road, Tijuana. Okay. Uh, Mark Thompson, motion to accept it. Second. All in favor? And the next one is 2431, uh, NIPSCO's request and permit to install a new gas line at 11311 West Lakeshore Drive, Kiwana. I'm saying it's a board too. Yeah, all of these are boards. Yeah. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor. Motion carries three up. And the last one, 2432, NIPSCO's request and permit to install a new gas line at 5799 North Lakeshore Drive. Nancy, you on the lake again. Sam, you're good with that? Yep. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Here's three That's all the permits today. Um, Guys have been patching holes, running the brush cutter. Uh, they're 
mainly working chip and seal right now, working on that. We're probably three quarters of the way down for the season. So uh, weather's been kind of challenging this year to get things done. A lot of rain and interruptions. How many miles of chip and seal this year you got? Uh, <coughs> what was it around 40, John? Or give or take a look? <coughs> About where we average you usually. Um, Federal aid, um, old 31 South, we talked about that. Um, we've got a few things. They're going to try to close that out or have the final inspection around the end of the month. So, and close, close out that project. Um, community crossings projects, Brooks, uh, I think the weather's held them up on getting over there west side of the county pavement on those uh, but I know they're ready to go anytime so they should be starting in a day on those um, of course NDOT still got 14 closed from 17 to Winnemac uh, they are letting traffic go through somewhat local traffic but then they're going to start milling on that today we're getting some of the millings uh, they're doing a deep milling back when they get all that done and do the main line milling and we're getting a lot of millings from them on that project so uh, we've got a lot of millings this year all together because we've got all the from old 31 too so um, and then they're even bringing in uh, they're doing Lyle parking lot today we're getting those for free so every little bit helps Yep. Um, I don't know the situation on State Road 25. We still got a detour around the bridge at Mill Creek or Mud Creek. Um, last I heard, it was going to open today, but I've heard rumors it might be another week. Uh, I don't know. We'll find out at the end of the day. <laughs> it open or not? Yeah. Um, on the lot drainage and stormwater, I know USI started the application for. Permit with IDM. Uh, there have been some emails back and forth what they're asking and so forth, but it's moved it forward. Um, the only other thing I have today is uh, we'll see a transfer request for $8,075 from calcium chloride to other supply, and that is to pay for the concrete blocks that we bought out there for the stockpiles. That worked out pretty good for you. Didn't yes, it? real good. And we need a lot more of them, but maybe as time moves forward, you know, we can get more later on. It uh, made a difference. That's good. Cleaning things up. Okay. You got any questions for me? Or? I don't. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Thanks, John. Thank you. Kathy, treasure it. Mm, I think I'll be at conference Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so I'll, Jen and I'll be out of the building okay. the next three days. Good. Other than that, everything's good. Everything's good. Right, good morning, Dawn. Good morning, guys. <clears throat> kind of leaving off. I make up for what Travis didn't have today. I'll make up for it a little bit as far as what I've got to report. I believe it was in June, 1st of July, I reported to you about our Everbridge program that we were looking to cancel. Um, they needed prior notice and during all the confusion and so on and so forth. No worries though, I've got it in my budget, I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up and then that being said, I'm gonna utilize it to the best I can to see if it's gonna be something we're gonna re-up next year. I know Travis and I have talked about that and figuring out what to use within our county on the Everbridge system. So I will go ahead and use it for another year, um, get myself caught up on it, figure it out, and see if it's something we want to keep or not. So um, some different things that in, involved EMA this month. Uh, I did attend the pastoral meeting um, with Amy and the mayor and the council and uh, helping Hope program start looking at that. So it's kind of a role that I've stepped into to help start filling there too. So. I had radio training with WTS on the GSI system that I'm wanting to utilize more so with our volunteers in the trucks and so on and so forth. So um, getting my volunteers trained on that also. And we had the EMA meeting 
and they are working on, so we know here at the um, auditor's office and HR, um, I've asked them to update their badges to make sure everybody's got a badge to wear out in the public and on scene um, so they know, so we have identification that, you know, who they are and what organization they're with. Also, we're at 21 members now. We've upped in a couple of members. We pulled in a couple from the actual fair new members. Um, the clerk's office and I attended last, one day last week, sorry guys. Uh, anyways, um, we attended the uh, voting cybersecurity and it was very knowledgeable. Don and I went and uh, it was good, it was good. So um, that's for our voting cybersecurity. There's a couple things that we made notes of to get with Josh on. And uh, she asked me a couple questions, what EMA can do um, with the voting that's coming up in November. So, And then we had the Fulton Days that was just passed. July was a bit of a busy month, needless to say, for me, for EMA. And um, we had three different weather responses, which a total of 30 hours. We had um, two different accidents that we assisted with the Sheriff's Department and actually one with um, Argus and Rochester Fire Department. That was one of the accidents um, that EMA needed to attend. Um, the other one was just a PR fatality that we went on. But the one accident was up at 31 and 10, 110, and they had a spill that EMA I needed to go out and take care of. And uh, so total, and then three event, different events that we took care of. So we had a total of like 88 hours for the month just for the volunteers. So that was their totals for the month. Um, upcoming training, there's a helicopter training if anybody's interested at Albi on the 21st in the evening. I believe that is at six <coughs> o'clock, the helicopter training. And then LAPC, which is part of our, the county here, is doing a corporate lunching luncheon at the fairgrounds on the 21st um, and I believe that's right around noon and that's a corporate luncheon, luncheon for LAPC. Um, upcoming events um, and I just got with uh, Trent, Mr. Adele, or Mayor. I sent him out an email to make sure that I'm making, keeping everything covered and we've got the Kiwana Days, the Chili Cook-Off, the Parade. Those are all the things that EMA will be involved in unless you guys give me a heads up on something else um, to work with. So I believe that's it for my report. And, uh, any questions? Anything? Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. Um, Casey, assessors, anything? No, I'm good. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so Fulton County Hope, uh, we did have the pastors meeting in partnership with Mayor O'Dell and had uh, not as many as we had wanted. I don't know if it was the time, but who was there were really engaged. Um, have a group of individuals who are willing to work on the short-term solution um, as Trent and the others working on the long-term. So uh, send the email. I just sent you a text to confirm I have your email correct. <clears throat> so we'll uh, figure out what it looks like to have a warming station here in the cold months to get that taken care of while they're working on the full solution. Um, working with Doug Beller still waiting for our transportation survey results. And so that was supposed to come in July. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to call the person on the way to work and double check to see where they're at with that. That was, if you remember, supposed to be a review of the program for Transpo to see um, what we were doing and what the community needed and if there was a gap. So we had surveys that were submitted um, via a link, so I have not seen that yet. And hopefully that's helpful as we're looking at meeting expanding hours or whatever that would be. Um, and then uh, I'm going to get with Kathy here in a second. <laughs> Uh, and just check because I am meeting um, with the folks at the Beeman Home. Uh, Renee actually stepped away from the position, the director, um, to pursue other things. So they're in an interim situation. And so <clears throat> I have an interested individual in the position for the domestic violence counselor here. 
Um, but we need to figure out the financing side of that. So I have a meeting with the new interim director on August 8th to kind of figure out what that looks like and what the next steps will be related to that. So um, that's Fulton County Hope stuff. Um, I also wanted to just kind of, because we had talked about this, Ryan, a little bit, um, for the city of Rochester, um, which if the sidewalks are not the counties that changes <laughs> things, um, truck, that would be one of those places there in green that they could go. But we wanted to make sure that it was a safety for us, safety first. So um, the beautiful part about this is that we can do this and then we can repeal it at any time. So I have talked to other uh, towns and cities who have done this. Um, in Warsaw, uh, there was uh, a lot of discussion. One of the council folks was up, was concerned, so they um, put a lot of time and effort into reviewing and researching, um, even having the police do a report or in the process of that. Um, and so, um, yeah, we've got lots of partners. Logan Sports, the one that has uh, worked closely with us to get the ordinance together. So. We're grateful for the opportunity to provide a potential economic development um, opportunity for the restaurants to help them and to help the events, but we also want to be very cautious of what we do with everything that we do. So, um, yeah. so that's kind of where we're at. So I don't know if we need to officially do anything about the sidewalks or if I'm allowed to have the sidewalks in the map, but I plan on presenting everything to the team tomorrow, getting all the final details, and then moving everything forward. You want us to get yeah. permission, that way it don't matter whose they are, we're both, <laughs> the city goes along with <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gotta decide who wants to talk about that. Just to clarify, I was just told from my street department guy that the sidewalks were yours. It's like, That's why I've always thought, too. Really I really like, truthfully did think really, that. I, I, honestly, I, don't. I honestly found this out, too. I thought the parallel sidewalk all through town belong to the city, but they don't, they belong to the individual property owner. Um, so basically the sidewalks belong to you. Now you're gonna charge me rent for them now for this, aren't you? He'll pay it. Yeah, he'll get permission to, okay. for them to further investigate whatever it is they're gonna investigate. I mean, have you seen much about it? I mean, I don't know. Much about what? What, that, what they're trying to do. This, this looks good. Kind of yeah, pretty yeah. much. I I go to most of the city council meetings, so I've heard them talking about it for the last what, two or three months. Amy, you guys have been putting this together, but um, I don't see a problem in it myself. But that's they if you want to explain it, Amy. Go ahead. They have a few in Plymouth now, where they grass rail has them out there, and they bring out ball out. Last year they didn't. So with this new statute that came around south bend's opening up a lot of places that they have specific <coughs> areas that they can have and it's not just a free-for-all it's not just any no, they no. Have. i mean this. that's not the intent I mean, explain it it's got a few seconds explain yeah it. yeah well, i mean i, 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 I just want to make sure yeah. everybody understands that. yeah and that's not the that's why we're putting so much time and effort into it and trenton i have talked about this multiple times and why I was asked to do it. We just want to make sure that we're being responsible in the research that we do and the way that we understand and make sure that it fits for us. Honoring the business owners that have requested that we consider this and the organizations, but at the same time, make sure that we're doing what is correct and right for our community. Um, and so, like I said, there's communities I've checked um, from the size of 400 to the size of Fort Wayne who have done this. Um, from what I understand, Nobody's had any issues because they basically, it's the rules, everybody's got the rules and they have what you can do and what you can't do. Um, and then in that specific situation, we had a question that was asked, I believe it was a couple of meetings ago, if somebody were to get disorderly in this specific situation, would the police still be able to address that? And I said, yes, I mean, that's, you can't, this is not for individuals to go and have a free for all. This is just so that if there's an event, somebody could walk from, on port to ruthless they could ruthless wouldn't have to have their fence to be able to do whatever they do she could have things in the back of the patio they could walk around to the front um, there will be signs on every door the front and back that say you are now um, exiting into our door there's hard signs that say where the door at um, the boundaries will be um, individuals can choose if they are in the door to allow to have the um, adult beverages in or not. So we'll have signs so that it's very clear, decals, that say door friendly, 
or please no um, adult beverages, whatever. Um, so there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, logistics to make sure that this is right. And like I said, if we don't like it and it doesn't work, then we can just you know. Yeah. I, I think people can understand in front of a restaurant and to a restaurant to a restaurant. I guess, but mm -hmm. I'm just trying to understand. And, and I mean, I I know what you're doing, but everybody needs to understand. You know, to, to have it around the courthouse and all the businesses down here where there's no restaurants, mm -hmm. you know, what's the advantage of? That's only for special event, okay. special events. So that will be a whole separate ordinance. And I'm working with um, Becca McCraig at the Accelerate Indian Municipalities because we have to get the details of that. That's a whole different ordinance. And that will be related to anybody. So Trent and Beth and Andy, um, Attorney Perkins, are working on a special event application. So if somebody were wanting to use this special event DORA during, let's say, the chili cook-off, they would actually have to put an application into the city. And then the, uh, that would have to go through a process that would have to be approved for that specific event for the use of that area. So, so who carries the liability for, for I, mean, I mean, you're out here around the courthouse, and certainly there are sidewalks, so something would happen. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, do they indemnify the county? Because I don't think the county wants to pick up that. And I totally anymore. get that. That is one of the details that we are working on with Becca, just to make sure we have that. So we haven't actually brought that to be able to, to finalize it. We're just working on getting the map and the ordinance together and all the details. But um, that was a question by Rochester Downtown Partnership. So I am meeting with Becca or having a call with Becca coming up soon just to make sure we have that part taken care of as well. And um, Rochester Downtown Partnership, because they are considering hosting the map like we will have a QR code and it will have a map. They're asking their attorneys as well. So this isn't easy by any stretch. We've got all the details we want to sign still delivered before. So we can check into that too with the, specifically with the sidewalks, what that would look like. Um, obviously. Liability ought to be the same because you got to carry liability whether they crib and fall or what mm -hmm. they do. Well, I think that it's a little messy, like you talked about with the sidewalks, because it's like county, city, county, city, you know, yeah. that I can understand where there's discomfort with that. So I don't know if you have anything, Holly, that, you know. I mean, it, it, if I walk out there and fall down, now it's county, if, it, if there's a, a bump. But if they had a little too much alcohol beverage and falls fall down, then you have a whole another issue about who's responsible for that. Well, so and I do know that, yeah, I do know that one of the things that has to happen related to any event that happens is they do have, they are required to have special insurance. The event is, yes. Yes, the event right. is. So that is one thing that I want to fully understand. So the event is required to have insurance related to providing adult beverages. So I can check to see if that would be, if there were a situation, God forbid, would they be, would they be the first that would be identified through the event insurance? Is that how that works? I mean, these are, yes. Is that how yes. they work? And, and this, the county, who's ever sidewalks they might be. <laughs> <laughs> First, we have to resolve that issue. Uh, you're not responsible if just somebody falls down, but you're responsible if there's a crack in the sidewalk, if there's a giant bump that nobody saw. But you know, if you're just walking along and they trip on their own, then that's a whole nother liability issue that they would not win because there was, they did it themselves. And with so. the event insurance that they have, that they're required Correct. to get, then I'm yes. assuming that that would be right. what would be taken. But we are double checking all of those details just to make sure that we know exactly 100% talking to the city of Warsaw because they've, you know, they're very detailed related to that as, as far as Logan's Court as well, um, just to make sure that we have everything before. This is why it's taken since what? February or March to be able to do this because we've asked questions and more questions and researched more, researched more, had conversations, trying to figure out what makes the most sense and what's sensible and relevant and needed um, to the point that people are trying to rush. You know, these people are excited to have this for the events that are upcoming, but we just want to make sure that we don't feel that it needs to be rushed. We feel like it needs to be worked out um, for purposes of everyone being comfortable with what's moving forward then, so.
point? Do you need permission or do you need to bring back? I think it would be, I mean, if it were like a tentative permission, just so I can get the map, because that's what I'd like to do in August. I'd like to present, um, Andy, uh, Attorney Perkins is out of town right now, but what we had discussed, because people, when they see things in black and white, it really helps them versus just talking about it. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to have the, the two ordinances with the maps, but I don't want to submit that to the city council not having had your permission to be able to do that because that would be disrespectful. So I just don't want to put that out there without having some tentative, uh, you know. Do you have a permission for uh, tentative to move forward? Yeah, it would be nice to see the yeah. ordinance before we, yeah. You know. Yeah, and we're not going to rush it through and hide it or, you know, we're just trying to make sure that we balance talking about it and showing it at the same time, but we obviously have a lot of partners in this and want to make sure that we're being responsible. Brian, also, if you'd like to talk to Josh Finch, I think holds a lot of the same, you know, ideals mm -hmm. that you do um, at the city of Warsaw <clears throat> related to um, the Dora, and he did actually move forward and allowed it to be passed. If you want me to connect you with him, and you can ask all those questions because he's very detail oriented, um, and would be able to answer your concerns and what they have experienced. I'm more than happy to connect yeah, you to you if that would yeah, be helpful. Yeah, because he's done a lot of research and he and I have talked a lot about it, um, and uh, he shared his concerns and what they wish they would have done and all of those um, parts and pieces. Yeah, so sure. I can do that. Well, I'm entertain a motion to give a tentative approval of the sidewalks for the north and the uh, west side of the courthouse for the city. For the door. For the door project. I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, any other questions for anybody? All in favor? Motion carries. I appreciate it. And then I'll make that connection for yeah. you. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Good morning. <laughs> We had our board meeting. We missed you, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> it was good to have you there, though, Rick. Thank so you. we had a board meeting with DNR, um, people from Town Lake, people <coughs> representing Niana Lake. It was JPR Engineering, and we discussed some concerns at our board meeting. Um, I thought the meeting went pretty good. We came up with some solutions about sediment loads, nutrient loads, and um, Sediment nutrient? Oh, that's it. Sediment nutrient loads going into Town Lake. And uh, DNR suggested a layer, which is a lake and river enhancement program. Um, we're still figuring out the logistics of the funds on that, but they said that it'd be really great to be able to do um, a diagnostic study of where those loads are coming from because a lot of the property around Town Lake is in conservation reserved enhancement programs or done in cover crops and stuff like that. So we have a lot of a lot of sediment coming into the lake and we don't know where that's coming through. Whether it be farmers connected to county tiles and coming in that way, um, having a layer grant, we'll find point source solutions of where those sediment um, are coming from. So that's what we came out with that. And for my own lake, we just suggested that they lower the lake level. <laughs> because there wasn't much room on that whatsoever as far as flooding and my own lake floods a lot. So that's, that's what we suggested. It, it is what we suggested. Um, that's going to be a process for them to be able to do too. Um, and not this Saturday, but next Saturday is our Successful Soil Solutions with Ray Archuleta and um, Barry Fisher. And everybody's invited to that. Um, $25, we'll be meeting at the Fulton County Fairgrounds at um, the Everett Smith Building. And that's just gonna be a great, it's just gonna be a great day. Y'all just need to come, okay? <laughs> uh, so, uh, Ray and Barry are soil scientists, and even if you're not like a big scale farmer, say you guys do gardening, um, and you wanna learn how to increase your organic matter, biodiversity and stuff in your soils, and get uh, better produce on your vegetables or flowers. Come to this, 
you can learn something, I guarantee it. Um, so I'm gonna throw that out there. Um, we did have one issue this past week with our pollinator habitat at um, Rochester City Park, and um, the mayor has been really quick on that. Um, somebody mowed over our pollinator habitat and took all of our flowers. So, Ooh. but Ooh. it is getting fixed. <laughs> uh, so, so, so that that trend's been really great to work with. It's quick on the. <laughs> Hold me on that because those are clean water and Deanna Grant. So yeah, that's a process that we're working on. Um, I don't, I don't really have anything else other than that. Other than I really hope you guys come to my event. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for me? Nope. Okay. You're welcome. Guys, had a chance to throw up the travel request. Yeah. Yeah. Questions. Any other questions? To approve those. <laughs> so moved. Second. All in favor. Motion carries through. You guys had a chance to look over the claims, transfers, appropriations. Well, uh, yeah. Any questions, concerns, on those? Didn't see any. Okay. Transfer request from the treasurer for fifteen hundred dollars from legal fees and maintenance equipment to continuing education. We have transfer uh, from the prosecutor's office for three thousand eight hundred nine dollars and sixty one cents from software to extra help. Transfer request from the uh, highway maintenance and repair for $8,075 from calcium chloride to other supply. Yeah. Uh, the probation uh, building for, uh, from fire systems of $2,486.51 to cleaning. County Council, uh, $111,585.48 from contract to equipment that's uh, transferred to pay for the equipment purchased for Parkview Ambulance Services for our contract. We have the Health Department. Health Department liaison of $17,466 to public outreach supplies and contractual services. <coughs> Transfer from tourism, $2,800 for publications to advertising. That's a transfer via advertising as a negative says. Commissioners, uh, office supply of $5,500 to building and other insurance, $5,500. Um, to pay for the Woodlawn PCP contract, there's simply two separate transfers, so the bill is paid on time. The rest of the money is able to be used for upcoming bills that are. And uh, county commissioners, drug testing of $5,000 to building and other insurance. Appropriation. <clears throat> the auditor's office, $18,857 for the financial and taxing annual payment. We have an appropriation request from the Kiwana Public Library, $76,513 for <laughs> supplies and other services and charges and capital outlays. Explanation is under budget.
comes out of their budget, correct? Correct. Yes, yes. Insurance claim docket, uh, $15,271.47 for diverse disbursements of 6624-612. Insurance docket for the disbursements of 613 to 619, $3,885.39. Insurance claim docket for disbursements of 620 to 626 of $8,273.79. Insurance claim docket for 627 to 73, $15,807.54. Insurance docket. Y fees of fifty-three thousand seventy-one dollars and sixty-three cents. Insurance claim docket seven four to seven ten of thirty-two thousand four hundred and seventy-eight dollars and sixty-nine cents. Insurance claim docket seven eleven. To 717 at $38,630.85. Claims docket for utilities of $11,922.82. Claims docket for the Department of Treasury of $396.06. Docket for Regents Bank, uh, $813,000. Did you ask about this one? I don't know if I did or not. Do you, you, you have an explanation on that? $813,000 for the. Uh, it's a. Uh, I know we talked about it. Yeah. We have a solid waste claim, uh, $33,333.33. Wheel surtax, $56,838.32. Lip distributions, uh, $743,615.08. Utilities, $15,361.83. We have miscellaneous claims for August 5th of $1,690,415.33. Cards, $12,851.51. Claims for the Tourism Commission, $30,462.26.
Okay. We can we can prove it. We can sign that. She comes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any old business here? Uh, no, I don't believe so. But did we have minutes? You got minutes on there. Did we have no minutes? I don't have any minutes. Okay. Okay. No, I didn't have no uh, old business. Uh, we I got a uh, email, and I don't know for sure whether we need to do anything on it from uh, Jerry and from also from Christina Hawes concerning our EMA board that apparently it was not specifically named. There's an ordinance, we have an IC code that says who's supposed to be on that board, but it doesn't have a specific name that we haven't ran it through a meeting. Do you know, Don, if you got the, have you got a list of the EMA board members that we have that if you we've been meeting? Me, if you give me a second. Okay. We've been meeting whether we need to run that before a meeting on Friday to run that through as official to say exactly who's named on that. <coughs> really a bad idea. I know there was concerns with the 911 board too as far as the obscurity of the, the original ordinance where it didn't say specifically how people got on the board or anything else. So. Well, I think that the 911 is, they're wanting, uh, Barry thinks we need to uh, amend, do away with the, it's, cause that was in 1991. I think. Yeah, 89 was the original 991 something. Yeah, it's, it's old. Yeah, I think we're we, we need to we're in the process of getting something done with yeah, the uh, 911 board, but we've got one that for the EMA has been established in the meeting. Yeah, and I I actually spoke with Barry. Yeah. So I wonder if we've got our signals crossed here. Christina Hoss said we didn't have it have them specific the uh, position specifically mean, named in our uh, local county ordinances or IC or codes. And she couldn't find it. So all we need to do so is name them in a meeting to make them legal. To make them legal. So if you, if you got the names. If you got the names, I know it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pulling that from where we talked back and forth, and I want to make sure I have them correct. Because I know it's you and Jerry split right. your. Um, we're we're co-chairmen. Yeah, and I believe and Fish is Fish is on with it. us. Andy Schatz is on it. Yes. Uh, the fire chief, which would be now TJ. TJ is on it. Uh, did we have another representative from the fireman like Mike Timmy or was, did, did Tom Butler just cover it? Tom covered it. Okay. So. Uh, do we, did we have the mayor on that? No. Was he named? Okay. Travis was probably on that Travis one. Travis was on their wedding. I think so. Travis? I, I assume so, yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, like I said, if you give me just a second so I can pull that and make sure that I'm not misquoting who all we have on there. And I'm just referring back to where um, Barry and I just <coughs> we, we can circle back to that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anything else, Dave? No. Uh, Paula? Did, um, have we taken care of the Wagner Farm out there? The, <coughs> the spill was and all that? Peterson. Peterson, Peterson, Peterson I'm sorry. Uh, I, I think everything is we're waiting on. Yeah, we're moving uh, forward. In insurance is reviewing everything right now. Yeah. Um, and I spoke with Luke Smith this morning, and he's going to get the soil samples. Okay. Um, check them. Um, he wants to wait till fall to put the topsoil okay. out. Um, but okay. yeah, we're we're moving forward. Okay. So, I, I haven't heard anything from him, so I figured. Everything was going okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So far. Okay. We're moving forward. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Can you see any old business? Okay. Uh, Rick, new business. Any old business from the public? Uh, Steve. <clears throat> I just mentioned and thank everyone on behalf of the honor guard. We know we did pretty good at the benefit on good <coughs> life. Then we sold the old bus. So we're over the top. We got the new one all paid for. Good deal. Good, good deal. deal. Appreciate everybody that donated and bought tickets and everything else. Thank you for your effort. Yeah, everything went good. Any final thoughts? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, this is the same thing that I answered back to Barry. And we've got uh, Dave Summers, Commissioner and Co Chair. We have Jerry Good, Corner, Co Chair. JT Du Bois, 
fire. TJ, TJ, sorry. Doran Collins from Kiawana Fire Department, or Kiawana Township representative. Andy Schatz was the law representation. That's where we were on that one, Travis. So Andy Schatz is law. Um, Steve from Council. Michael Lau from Fedco. And then I'm there. Now I can forward this to you guys too. So you have it. Did you get that, Brian? I will. I'll go ahead and forward this to you guys, so you'll have it in print. Okay. But since Anita brought up in an actual meeting, there's Casey is at work. Brought up in the actual meeting for you. Okay. Do you want it too? So I'll I'll send it to Christina. Pause. Okay. So one question. So the sheriff's office. No, we had Andy Shops. Okay. For the law. Uh, yeah, see, I've been to those meetings, so I'm not yeah, sure how I got a So, here. and I think Amy's been there too, though. Yeah. I know. We can put the talking, sheriff on there, it though. Right? Me, I, I, I mean, I think as an EMA board, I think you need to have. Yeah, you know, yeah this or, is. Well, guys, I, I just adapted. I know. I know. That's well, you're fine. We're just talking through this. But, but yeah, we just, I would think Travis and the sheriff ought to be on there. Yeah. Because we'll kind of encompass the county. Yeah. And, and Andy would be the city. city right. Yeah. So, so let's have what you got and add Travis to that list. Yeah. So we have Doran Collins, Michael Ladd, uh, Travis, Andy, Steve, TJ, Jerry, and myself, and then Dawn as being the interim director. Correct? That's Deputy right. director, yeah. Okay. But I am going to go ahead and forward this to the three of you and to Christina Haas. Thank you. Okay. Add Travis to it. Don't forget to add Travis to it. And to Travis. No, no. Add his name to the. Okay. Because if you're just this form, that and got his name on it, make sure. Yeah. Okay, we'll I will. Him on it. Yeah. I will. Gotcha. Okay. Is that a one-year term appointment? You know, just this year? I would say it should be probably. Yeah. Okay. Like most of our boards and so year. then they're reappointed at, at the beginning of every year because people's going to come on and go off. Yeah. Right, right. Yep. Just wanted to state that. Yep. Thank you. For the record. Because I know it's been meeting because we've been going to meetings. Travis, oh, yeah. Steve, and I have all been there. But it hasn't been apparently, according to Christian Hawes, we haven't made it an official board. And I, I will go back through and see if she's within all my files and double check that there wasn't something whenever okay. put, in, okay. put into the into play that maybe she's just missing so because okay. believe me there's <laughs> files after files in there <laughs> okay so um, we had they read the list of people that will be on the EMA board this will supersede anything that's we've done mm -hmm. prior to Okay. okay. Uh, so I entertain a motion to appoint that board. Uh, I guess running through the end of the year. And yeah. Of yearly appointments. So. And that board is called an advisory board. Is that yes. EMA advisory. EMA yeah. advisory. I will make that motion. Second. Any questions from anybody? All right. All well, in favor? That motion carries three zero. Okay. Did we, anybody old business to ask? <laughs> All right, new business, right? No. Nope. Dave? No. Nope. Holly? No. Nope. Casey? No. Nope. New business? Okay, I've got public comment. Anybody want to say anything? Okay. Hearing none, entertain a motion to recess. So moved. Second. Second.